At the beginning of the story, dozens of a criminal group members wearing costumes and weapons like special forces carry out a massive robbery in a money storage building in the Paraguay region bordering Brazil. They taked down the security guards there and then blew up the walls. Flashback to the day of the robbery. This is the main actor in this story. He is a Brazilian federal police officer named Benicio. Benicio is considered always absent from his duties because he is busy investigating the death of his colleague three months ago, who is related to the gangster group led by Solis. There is a woman driving the car of a federal police officer named Sulin, who is returning to duty after completing maternity leave. His superior named Latimer assigns Sulin to be Benicio's partner. At night, Benicio gets drunk at a bar in Paraguay to reminisce about his departed partner Santos. At the same time, the gangster group was robbing a Progard building, which is a depository for money in the Paraguayan region. Unmitigated, one of the gangsters was tasked with driving away the police with his sniper. The gang had chosen the wrong room, as the money was on the top floor according to the confession of the guard named Diego, whom they had bribed. They were forced to blow the door back. The armed robbery went viral on social media. Suelen, who was holding her baby, also updated the news. Diego himself was eventually shot dead by one of his accomplices. After blowing up the door, they immediately grabbed the tens millions dollars that were in the safe. Because the location of this robbery is not far from the border of Paraguay and Brazil, Benicio and Suelen decided to patrol. The next morning, Benicio told Suelen that the robbery had something to do with the prison break three months ago that left Santos dead and 25 inmates prisoner on the run, but Suelen dismissed it as unsubstantiated ramblings. Entering the Etipulandia region, they both saw the robbers just crossing in a boat complete with weapons and bags of money they had looted. Unable to face them, Benicio and Sulin immediately went to call for help. Unfortunately, they had trouble contacting the base because there was no radio signal. Upon entering the highway, they were suddenly confronted by six cars from the gang. As a result, they were showered with bullets and forced to move backwards. Seen from the air, this group spread out in various directions. After receiving the report of his men, the head of the federal police named Rossi immediately deployed all his troops. Rossi got the green light from the federal director to handle the case directly from his headquarters. One of the robbers' cars broke through a police patrol on their escape route. A chase and shootout ensued. These gangsters chose to fight to the death rather than be captured alive and arrested. Some other perpetrators chose to snatch civilian cars containing mothers carrying groceries. Their goal was to escape through the bus station. After receiving the report, Benicio and Sulin immediately moved to the terminal. Rossi assigned his subordinate Yuri as a forensic expert, accompanied by his new colleague from the academy named Gilherm, who happened to be the son of a senator. They were assigned to investigate the van hijacked by the perpetrators. Arriving at the terminal, the two federal agents intercept a departing bus. They were suspicious of a man wearing shoes full of mud. All passengers were told to take their bags. As it turns out, the man's bag contains a lot of money. This is the leader of the robbers named Solis, who entered the terminal bathroom to hide his money in a trash can. Since an officer was carrying it, Solis signaled his men to retrieve the bag. Arriving at headquarters, Benicio and Sulin hand over the money bag to Rossi. Meanwhile, Yuri and Gil conducted a crime scene at the place where the police found the van that was seized by the gang. They found several long-barreled guns and pistols. However, the police were holding them without gloves. For Yuri, the piece of sausage eaten by the perpetrator was a clue to uncover his DNA. The perpetrator arrested by Sulin refused to open his mouth. He denied owning the bag, unless the team found his fingerprints. The other suspect arrested was apparently identified as a fugitive who escaped from the FOS prison three months ago. When Benicio intercepted him, this man glanced at Solis, who was sitting in the waiting room. He claimed to be nicknamed Mentex. Benicio assures Rossi that these perpetrators are the ones involved in the prison break three months ago. Rossi was not convinced, however, as there was no concrete evidence. Rossi points out one of the perpetrators shot dead named Mamet, a gangster leader in Brazil. Next, they interrogate the bald man with the Bible. 
he seemed calm, and to Benicio, he was very suspicious. He said he was delivering a car to a buyer on the orders of someone named Jer. He couldn't reach him because his cell phone battery was dead. Benicio took his cell phone to charge it first. Gil was nervous and shaked because Yuri could investigate the culprit's DNA from the sausage shown to his superiors. After his cell phone was charged, it turned out that the person who gave the order to the Baldi to send his car was difficult to contact. Because it has been 12 hours in detention and the team has not found any evidence, the bald man must be released. Next, we are introduced to a cop named Morera who has long been undercover as a gangster. From one of his cell phones, he sees a list of perpetrators who have been arrested. Benicio is surprised because it turns out that the bald man is Solis, a member of the gangster group. He is after who he believes that he is the killer of his partner, Santos. The story of three months ago, during the FOS prison break unfolds. Some inmates were seen playing soccer and others were relaxing, including Mentex. That day, Santos came to give a presentation to prison officials. Dozens of gangsters moved in with full military-grade weaponry. The prison walls were blown up, making hundreds of prisoners to riot. The group's goal is to free Martello and Kuroko, but anyone can escape. Santos and dozens of prison officers tried to fight back. But in the end, Santos himself was killed because he was shot and hit by the perpetrator's hot bullet. From then on, Benicio was determined to find the perpetrator. Rossi and his men held a special meeting to handle this armed robbery case. Not long after, Agent Moreira arrived. Benicio gave an overview that the perpetrators were not ordinary robbers, but they belonged to an elite gangster organization that had a mature structure and planning with the support of military-grade weapons, large financial support, and planning brains. The dead Mamute and the escaped Solus were just tools, because above them was the head of their organization. After crossing the Brazilian border, Solis could return to Paraguay to meet his men. Solis then asked Carimbo, who was assigned to take the bag in the bathroom, but he claimed the janitor took it first. But Solis didn't just believe it, he took his gun to shoot Carimbo in the leg to make him tell the truth. Finally, he confessed the money was hidden in a suburban graveyard. There was no mercy, Solis immediately finished him off. Although he claimed to be the only agent who infiltrated the gangster group, Benicio did not want to believe it. Long story short, the federal team was allowed to come to the scene of the robbery in Paraguay. It was recorded that $11 million were taken away by the robbers, but the press reported the value as high as $40 million. Yuri focused on investigating Diego's body, which was wearing a luxury watch and was not bent over like a frightened person. In the footage, it appears that the armored car was used as a shield when the perpetrators blew up the wall. The armored car seems to have been parked there intentionally. That's why the team will ask for information from the driver. Here comes the fat guy, the driver who just woke up with several wads of money on his desk. Since this was Paraguayan territory, Benicio and Suilin chose to keep an eye on him. All this time, Benicio had a tape of the events inside the prison that he had gotten from a prison officer. He has watched it thousands of times in memory of his friend. The chase was on when the team saw the driver being forcibly taken by a car. The team could stop them and then took the driver. Rossi only allowed Morera to serve as a consultant on the case due to his suspended status from headquarters. The driver, Torres, claimed to have been paid by Alvinegro, man with a tattoo on his neck, to park his armored car near the wall. He said he met him in the Wastu area. Eventually, the team found the criminal's base before the action, which was filled with beer bottles and cans and some ammunition. Yuri was thrilled, as he really sure it was full of the perpetrator's fingerprints and DNA. Gil was assigned to accompany and assist Yuri. Alvinegro was now unable to escape from justice because of Juarez's testimony. Yuri immediately worked to collect various objects that could be used as evidence to investigate the identity of the perpetrators. Yuri was surprised that in this place he found thousands rounds of ammunition. Yuri was worried that the criminal gang would come back there to take it. A passing car alarmed them. Benicio finally releases Juarez to return to Paraguay due to juridical issues.
Morera went to a former drug runner he had rescued named Rawl for information. He told him that the conflict began with the organization's attack on Ryad, who was nicknamed the King of the Border. Despite being guarded by armed forces, Ryad was killed by a machine gun on the way. Since then, the Border has been controlled by the organization. But there is another figure called the Ambassador, who was born in Brazil but grew up in Paraguay. There is also a leader who is in prison, but his power outside never subsides. There was a big conflict with the organization until both parties agreed to peace. Solace came to Bigot's drug factory to report his robbery problem, which resulted in him only getting $7 million. Over the phone, Solace was told to explain directly to Seek. Seek said the main problem was with the ambassador and their organization only had three months to raise $30 million. If they failed, then the peace deal would be ruined. Moriera secretly installed a tracking device under Benicio's car. In addition, the team is no choice to release the Alva Negro due to insufficient evidence. At the same time, Yuri and his partner from the DNA lab could identify the suspects, and Alva Negro is one of them. Surprisingly, Solace was found to be involved in the prison break and the prime suspect in Santo's death. And finally, Benicio returns to catch Alvinegro before he escapes again. The Brazilian federal police got into a shootout with a group of gangsters who want to be arrested in various operations carried out according to the results of the DNA investigation of a money robbery suspect. One of the gangsters named Roleda is free to do business because two corrupt federal police protect him. Moreira entered Yuri's special Sentex room. He got to see Mamut's cell phone, which was being hacked for the password, but took another 13 hours. Solace, who was asking Rolita for help to give him a job, because he had to get $27 million in three months. Two federal police come back to Rolita to ask for more money. His hand was almost drilled because Rolita had refused. Rolita was no choice to promise $50,000 on the weekend, even though he hid a wad of money in his underwear. With the help of Professor Assen, the team finally found one of the suspects named Roleta, who was indirectly involved in the robbery. Roleta's problems were compounded by the fact that he lost a lot of money playing gambling that night. After 13 hours, Morera sneaked into the science lab to take one of the photos on Mammut's cell phone and deleted it. Morera met with Latimer regarding the investigation he had done about Mammut's photo and the person who ratted him out. Vladimir looks scared of what Morera is doing, but it is yet to be revealed what his true intentions are. It was revealed that Rolita was the main suspect in the theft of the money in the armored car. In his actions, Rolita's group did not hesitate to use modern weaponry and explosives. After successfully robbing the money, although unplanned and accidentally seen Progard's car, Rolita went into action again right away. Two of Solace's men broke into Rolita's workshop. Sulin, who saw his throw away at a drink can, immediately retrieved it for his DNA investigation. Rossi doesn't want to arrest Rolita in the armored car robbery, but will use him to solve the Progard robbery. At night, Gil took over Benicio and Sulin's duties to watch Rolita's workshop as per Rossi's orders. The next morning, Gil saw a motorcycle coming out that was suspected to be Rolita. Upon receiving this report, Suelen immediately picked up Benicio, who was still fast asleep and had not time to get ready to leave immediately. But Gil was wrong because the motorcycle was not Roleta, because Roleta was planning another robbery with Solis. Moreira, on the other hand, is lurking on the tarmac as a small plane unloads a suspicious package. Benicio and his partner saw Roleta return to his workshop. As it turned out, the two corrupt cops were waiting for him. As Roleta is taken away, the team follows them to a farm. After a long wait, they decided to go in, especially after they saw the cleaning team. It turned out that they had killed Roleta. A shootout ensued with the two corrupt civilian police officers. As a result, Swillen was shot and had to be rushed to the hospital. In the morning, Benicio gave the news of Swillen's shooting to her husband. Rossi gets information from the corrupt police that Roleta is working with the Solis. At that time, Benicio and Santos were wreck reckless to enter the gangster's base, and a shootout ensued. Because they were overwhelmed, both of them tried to escape. 
Santos immediately saved Benicio, who was shot, until finally they both could escape. Sulin then had to escape from the death, even though her gunshot wound had not recovered. Solis and his men held the bank manager and his family, catching their home to execute a plan. Benicio enters Rolita's workshop to look for clues to Solis' plan. The pilot introduces Moreira, who is disguised as a mascara, to a mobster named Russo. Moreira claims to have served in the military as a weapons expert to work with him. Back to Solis, the bank manager confessed to him that he would only get a total of $6 million from his two armored cars. If Solis wanted above $20 million, he would have to rob two banks at once. Tired of being on the forensics team, Gil was eager to go into the field to accompany Benicio, but his superiors refused. Yuri immediately realized after Gil said the grinding machine he believed contained the DNA of other perpetrators. Benicio is assisted by a police detective to investigate Rolita's robbery at that time. Moreira is told by mob boss Jason to assemble an AK rifles gun in one minute to prove that he is indeed a weapons expert. Beside that, Benicio marks three towns that are suspected to be Rolita's robbery targets. After looking at the map, he deduces that Rolita used a river route and Benny finds the car that Rolita used to drown in. Now their findings will be connected to the robbery plan that Solis and Rolita's henchmen will carry out. The military is involved, as they believe a massive robbery in three cities at once will happen again. Benicio was very upset because they didn't believe the results of his investigation. Finally, he decides to go alone. Solis and his men were seen preparing their weapons. Rossi tells Sulin and Warera that Benicio is out of the case because he is difficult to contact and goes against his orders. It turns out that Benicio is renting a boat. Morera will go with Sulin and Yuri to find Benicio, even though they don't have Rossi's permission. Morera was able to find his car, as he had a tracking device installed, but he kept it a secret from the team. They eventually meet up with Benicio. Then they prepare themselves if they actually meet the armed robbers. Solis and his dozens of men began to move. Their first step was to spread mines along the road, including parking the truck in the middle of the road. This heavily armed gangster group carried out robberies at three banks simultaneously. They forced civilians to line up as shields if had attack from the authorities. Solis taught his partner a lesson and punish him for injuring the bank manager. Not accepting Solis' actions, Gordon planned to take the money from the robbery. A large explosion is carried out by this group to break the safe. Meanwhile, a team of police and military had prepared to intercept this robbery gang on the land route. The joint team could kill Gordon who decided to run away from Solis. Meanwhile, Solis and his henchmen escaped using two fast boats as Benicio suspected before. The federal team got into a firefight with Solis and its members on the ship. Yuri was shot, but luckily only hit his bulletproof vest. The firefight continued to the mainland. After his men were killed, Solis attacked blindly and threw grenade. The federal team failed again, as Solis could escape into the forest. Rossi reprimanded Benicio and his colleagues because this operation was carried out without his permission. Even so, Rossi still helped them account for this operation to his superiors. Solis, who was shot, then was found and treated by the priest. Before Solis left, he put several wads of money there for the rewards. That day, dozens of federal police officers gathered for Sulin's daughter's birthday party. Benicio got to know Sulin's sister, named Suli, who looked sexy. This is the first time Yuri was shot in the field. It was made him traumatized. Therefore, Benicio encouraged him. Moreira was returned to Sao Paulo because Vladimir considered him to have violated his duties as a federal police officer who was on suspension. Meanwhile, Benicio and Suling are assigned to go undercover as a married couple to investigate Philip and three other suspects who are on vacation with their spouses. Long story short, the two of them arrived at a luxury beachfront hotel. Their tattooed quarry suspect was vacationing. The two federal cops mingle with them. Rossi tells Yuri about a criminal group called the Ghost Gang. This gang never left witnesses, fingerprints, or clues after committing an act. There was a strong suspicion that they were involved in the big robbery. A clue leads to Amaro from the explosives manufacturing company. 
Yuri said he was transferred to the National Genetic Lab in Brasilia. Although the distance is quite far, he will still help this case. The leader of the Ghost Gang team named Isaac met with Bigot, who told Isaac to involve Solis in their next mission. The reason is because they are both members of the organization. An arms dealer named Amaro threatened to become a suspect for allegedly selling the explosives to the robber group, had his DNA taken for investigation purposes. Gil is seen watching the process as Amaro's saliva is taken. Looking at his fancy watch, Amaro seems to want to bribe the young cop. Benicio and Sulin's next mission was to get the gangster's fingerprints and DNA to confirm their involvement in the robbery. They grabbed the bottles of drinks they were holding and took their saliva. Benicio is no choice to get involved in their fights at the nightclub in order to gain their trust. It was in Paraguay's Tacumbuc prison that is the ambassador, nicknamed the Border Ruler, was detained. But his cell room is as luxurious as a five-star hotel with office facilities. His subordinate named Jason reported that the organization would soon hand over the money. That day, Isaac's men picked up Solis using a head covering to be taken to his headquarters. Isaac, who doesn't really like Solis, is willing to do the mission ordered by the organization, but must do it his way. Swillen ambushed Philip's wife while offering her drugs. She is forced to tell all of Philip's actions related to the Progard robbery. She then mentions one of the mafia named Tuka, who sold Philip weapons. Tuka also introduced Philip to Solis. Eventually, Philip and his associates were arrested by the federal police. Amaro, who worked with the Ghost Gang group, came to see Isaac. Apparently, Amaro could influence Gil to become his informant. On the other hand, Morera is called again by his group, the Ambassador, to carry out an assassination mission. Meanwhile, the federal team moves to a location to catch Tuka. Benicio and Sulin arrived at Tuka's gas station. Having just asked a few questions about his involvement with Solis, the gang suddenly appeared and launched an attack. Tuka's daughter, who was there, was told to go away, but one of the perpetrators could catch her. Suelen was almost shot by the perpetrator. Fortunately, Moreira, who was disguised in his mask, appeared to save her. Because his daughter was taken, Tuka intended to save her. But what happened there, that he was shot dead. The masked gangsters then left. They killed Tuka to eliminate all traces. Pieces of Moreira's past began to emerge, when Moreira was ordered to kill a policeman. The federal police were convinced that the gangster organization was planning something bigger than last robbery. This is what they have to find out. Isaac's men are seen calculating the time of arrival at the International Airport cargo site regarding the next robbery plan. Meanwhile, Benicio and Sulin come to the prison where Tuka was once held to look for clues to the identity of his cellmate. After a take of time to searching, they finally found the file of Solace, whose real name was Wellington. According to prison officials, Solace is very close to the priest who often provides spiritual guidance to prisoners. As it turns out, Solace is dubbed a professional killer who is highly feared and respected. But his heart was melted by a lawyer named Monica until the two of them got married. While on the way, Gil was thrown a wad of money in exchange for his information. Meanwhile, Professor Asen could find the location of Monica's residence in Sao Paulo. Long story short, while watching her house, they saw Monica had just entered. Apparently, there are two civilian police who are watching her too. Gil was contacted by Isaac through the cell phone he gave him to provide information that Benicio and Swulin were watching Solis' wife. The two civilian police officers who worked with provided information that Monica and Solis had a child. A good opportunity for them to use the child, because no matter how evil a criminal or murderer is, he will be defeated when dealing with his own child. Rossi asked for the director's approval to take the child's DNA which became the tools for this mission. The two federal agents infiltrated Monica's home to install that bug's device on it. Back at the hotel, they didn't realize Isaac's henchman Lobo was watching. Lobo secretly installed the bugs in their hotel room. They gather at the group's base, where Jason shows Morera his sniper weapon. Solis caught Lobo in his room. After he heard his family was being threatened, Lobo explained he was watching two federal agents who were targeting his child and wife. 
Solis secretly went into his child's room to leave an envelope of money. After that, he called Monica to come into that room. In the envelope, Solis wrote that his house had been bugged. The police there first gave chase armed with the location of Solis's cell phone. Benicio asked the two policemen to hold back until they arrived, but they couldn't wait to get into the warehouse. As it turned out, Solis trapped them with an explosive device. The two civilian policemen died on the spot. Benicio felt that a traitor had leaked the operation. His guess was Moreira, because when Benny was in the river, Moreira could find out. Meanwhile, Moreira secretly installed an bug eavesdropping device at the group's base. Isaac is angry with Solis for his stupid act of killing two policemen. However, Solis is even more angry that he pointed his gun, because this is related to his family. The ghost gang went into action by disguising themselves as federal troops to the cargo warehouse at the airport. They gathered dozens of officers who were taken hostage. Their goal was to seize a large box that was first blown up. Apparently, this gang of gangsters robbed hundreds of gold bars weighing a total of one ton. It was so heavy that the pickup truck they used was difficult to run, but this group could escape without any interference. Dozens of media and police came to the crime scene of the robbery. The stolen gold is estimated to be worth 200 million rials. Arriving at a warehouse, the robbers moved the gold into an ambulance. Meanwhile, Jason has a group of mercenaries who will be involved in a big plan. Solace is tasked with the ambulance, while Isaac and his men remove the fingerprints and DNA traces from the cars. Rossi gets a report from his men about a possible traitor who leaked their mission to Monica. One of the interrogated cargo officers showed suspicious movements after removing his watch. Apparently, he was bribed by the ghost gang's robber swarm to provide information on routine activities at this location. Huel starts to get scared because his superiors have start indicated as a traitor, but he can't get out due to Isaac's threats. The group used bleach to remove the traces on the federal car they used. Investigations were conducted from CCTV around the crime scene. They found two ambulances passing by. After zooming in, it turned out that the driver was Solis. From the results of the license plate investigation, Professor Essen found the position of the ambulance car. The police had blocked his escape route. However, Solis turned through a dirt road to get to a small runway. It turned out that a small airplane was waiting for him. The federal team failed again, as the gold had already been taken away on an airplane. At this point, Benicio could not control his emotions. The gold arrived at the gangster's base. Jason showed the gold to the mercenary leader so that he would immediately prepare his troops. Benicio visited his ex-wife and child, who did not want to see him because work had always been a priority over his family. Likewise, Fernando was disappointed with Sulin for focusing more on her duties than her children and husband. Sulin also apologized and regretted. Dozens of mercenary members are practicing at the gang's base. But until this moment, Isaac had kept the operation secret, even to his own men. So, at this base, Isaac from the gangster organization combines forces with Jason from the ambassador group. It was this great mystery that the federal team still thought Moreira was the traitor. Secretly, Moreira saw the exclusive and internal meeting between Jason, Solis, and Isaac regarding their plans. Moira actually installed a bug eavesdropping device under the table where the gangsters discussed their plan. As it turned out, there was a helicopter about to land carrying the head of the organization. He is Bigot, the gangster boss who gave Moreira the order to kill the police. To protect his cover, Moreira was no choice to shoot him. And now when Bigot saw his face, Moreira immediately ran away. The chasing was done on him interspersed with gunfire. Moreira could finish them off and then escapes by boat. Jason was surprised because it turned out that Moreira was an undercover cop. Because this location had been leaked, they immediately packed up to leave this base. Moreira has a secret meeting with Rossi to prove he's not a traitor. He gave Rossi evidence of his wiretaps and the cell phone of one of their members. The problem was, Moreira himself had could not get information on the plans they were preparing, such as going to war. Federal troops stormed the base, but the group had already escaped. Rossi assured his men that Moreira was on their side. 
Gil secretly followed Rossi, who was meeting with Moreira at a hotel. The federal team was still struggling to solve the puzzle, as the footage Moreira provided was not very clear. They only heard the phrases Hell 42, Mexican Guards, Special Forces, and others. Upon further investigation, this was not a robbery, but a break-in of the Tacumbuk prison where the ambassador was languishing. The figure of the ambassador is very important for Paraguayan justice before being extradited to Brazil. Therefore, they will release him. Dozens of members of the joint organization group with mercenaries were seen preparing their weapons. Flashback to a few months before the Progard robbery was committed, Bigot had a meeting with Solis. Apparently, Isaac had not joined the organization, but his actions in the criminal world caught their attention. Especially in the various armed robberies carried out by his group, called the Ghost Gang. Since Solis had never robbed a bank and the location was in the ambassador's territory, Bigot asked for his permission first. In addition to the $10 million that Solis had brought, he promised that the Progard robbery would be handed over to the ambassador in exchange for peace. Apparently, the ambassador asked for another reward, release from a Paraguayan prison before being extradited to a federal prison in Brazil. Gil told Isaac that the federal police already knew about his plan to free the ambassador. Since the police would take the ambassador out of prison, Isaac and his henchmen changed their previous plan. From originally going to break into the prison, they now simply attacked the convoy carrying the ambassador. They dispatched some mercenaries for the first plan. Meanwhile, Rossi and the rest of the heavily armed federal agents were already prepared to receive the ambassador, who would be handed over by the Paraguayan police and their special operations team. The federal team would be assisted by Brazilian special forces led by Leticia. Inside the prison, the team disguised as janitor's drugged anesthetic and brought the ambassador out of the prison. The federal team got into trouble again as the enemy seemed to be aware of the covert operation. They were surrounded on the streets of the city by burning cars, forcing them to find another route. One by one, their convoy cars were attacked. The group even used RPGs to attack the team. A fierce battle ensued. One by one, federal police officers became victims and taped down. The location where the ambassador was handed over became a battlefield. One of the officers watching the ambassador choose become to be a traitor. He shot his own colleague, then escaped with an important package. Although his main target escaped, Benicio focused on hunting down Solus. The enemy was taken out before firing its rockets. The joint team could control the situation. The chase was on when Benicio saw Solis escape. Meanwhile, the ambassador arrived at a hangar with a tight guard from Isaac and his troops. The high-profile criminal boarded his private jet. The traitorous Paraguayan cop gets paid by Isaac. Although Solis hasn't arrived yet, Isaac doesn't seem to care and chooses to leave. Benicio focused on chasing Solis while Swellen hunted Jason. The ambassador's henchman opened fire on Suelen. Then Swellen retaliated by shooting his leg and finally could arrested this villain alive. Meanwhile, Benicio was hunting Solus at the car wreck parking lot. The killer of his colleague had taken a man as a hostage, until finally Solus gave himself up. Gil could not avoid it anymore because Moreira had arrested him as a traitor to the police. Benicio apologized for wrongly accusing Moreira, even though he had installed a tracking device in Moreira's car. The main mission to catch Santos' killer was over, but that didn't stop him from hunting down other criminals like Isaac, who was still at large and free. In the end of the day, the two federal cops are toast once again. With their mission succeed, this season of the series ended.